You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. And the thing is, if you don't skin them first, you get all lots of fur in the cheese. Ah, hello. Welcome to Chewing the Cud. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well, thank you very much. Oh, great. Yeah. This is a very interesting shirt you've got. Um, it's, it, it's, it's one of the shirts I kind of wear to weddings. I've basically run out of clothes because my washing machine's broken. Okay. Yeah, terribly sorry. But you, you get the nice wedding wear. Look at you trying to prove you've been to the gym. <laughs> I have been to the gym. I've lost an inch off my waist. Yeah, it's just... The... Look at me wearing my shirt. Okay. Uh -huh. the, well, if you notice, the, the buttons have popped. Mm -hmm. It's because I've got a nice beefy chest. <laughs> So, what have you got for us today, Mike? I do stuff. I've got a story about AI becoming fully independent, and then I'm going to pee right off in that science, that is. <sighs> and we even have a game to play in our game of the week. But on screen now, you can see our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as the names of people who have dropped a line bumble along the bottom of the screen, we go over to Mr. The Showbiz. <laughs> Do you know Lucas Cage from the, um, oh, Lucas Gage, I should say, rather than Cage, uh, from The White Lotus? No, not watched White Lotus. Uh, it, a really great show. It had a nice little, uh, a nice little part in it, shall we say. I, you could see him fully naked. Okay. And he's a very attractive There's boy. a lot of nudity in this show, from what I understand. <laughs> there is. Yeah. There is. There is. It was a very nice show, uh, and, and he was a bit of a, a, a breakout standout star. Um, a lovely penis, then. Yeah, yeah, basically. He's a very handsome man. Um, and he got married to a celebrity hairstylist called Chris Appleton in 2023. Okay. Yay! 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 Apparently, it was a very extravagant uh, affair, um, a secret wedding ceremony, but it was officiated by Kim Kardashian. We love her, don't we? Yeah. And uh, apparently, they were having music from country megastar Shania Twain. It's a very gay wedding. It was a very, very gay wedding. Very gay wedding. <laughs> like, what music should we have? Should we have a DJ and that stuff? Shania Twain. Nah, yeah, Shania Twain. I mean, she's not done a lot recently, so she'll be cheap too. I think she was quite cheap in the heyday, really, oh, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I think that's why we liked her. Um, anyway, as gaudy and as extravagant and as high profile as this wedding was, they divorced after six months. Okay. Yeah, very, very sad thing. Um, yeah, we're not happy about that at all. He's back on the market, yes. Um, anyway, apparently he's um, in the midst of all of this divorce, having to fight off rumours about his new love interests. Oh. Yes. There's an actor from Saltburn, which I've not actually seen yet, so, I, you yeah. know... Uh, apparently it's very good and I, very I, good. I need to watch it. Um, but yeah, an actor from Salt Bar Burn, not the main guy, but Archie Madueki. Oh. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but like yes. That. Yeah, this, this fella. It's a, it's a bit of a dish. Well, yeah. And that's what Lucas had to say about it as well. Um, they're not dating, according to Lucas. Uh, apparently he's... Taking a break from all the dating apps, so apparently not shagging either. No, no, he's not dating apps. He's still got Grinder on there. Grinder is not a dating app. Yeah, to be fair, not at all. But he says he's taking a break from that all, and he's dating me. No, not not me, oh, right. but himself. He's dating himself. He's having a wank. Um, but yes. <laughs> He loves the fact that there are rumours about this. He takes it as a compliment. He says Archie is a hottie, and 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 he is. Um, that he's, but they're just they're just good friends. Who sometimes touched each other's willy. Quite possibly, but officially, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's I, the news I, about those two. I'd like to see that. That that that, that um, OnlyFans. Yeah, well, you never know if the acting career goes wrong. <laughs> Um, anyway, on to other news. Scream 7, the production has run into trouble. Good. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to this. I've got friends who are waiting with bated breath for this. Scream 7. Scream 7, yeah. Scream was the, the, the brilliant movie that it was. Mm -hmm. Could have stopped there and should have stopped there. 
Well, it didn't. And there's more to come. But may maybe this news will excite you. Okay. Okay? So uh, the main stars of Scream 6 have dropped out. There was a little bit of trouble with Melissa Barrier from um, her comments on social media about Israel and Palestine. She was the lead actress in Scream 6. Not watch Scream 6. I stopped at 2. Well, oh, 3, sorry. I stopped at Scream 6 and they're like, oh, more Scream now. Well, you've, 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 you've made that point. <laughs> Let me get to the good bit that's going to excite you about Okay, this. then, come on, then. Okay, so she fell out. Jenny um, Ortega, who plays Wednesday Adams, she also dropped out, apparently because of scheduling conflicts, okay. but who knows. And the director left as well. All right, okay. So that's Scream a... 7 nice. looked like it was just going to go and be cancelled. Maybe it should have happened, but okay. M maybe, maybe. But one of the big problems with Scream 6, what everybody was upset about, was the main star, Neve Campbell, mm -hmm. wasn't going to return because she was demanding her rightful pay for being the main star of the franchise, and she wasn't getting it, so oh, right. she decided not to do it. Well, they've offered, offered her more money, obviously, because she's coming back for Scream 7. Hey. Hey, there she is. Yep, she's coming back. Apparently, they've been very respectful and obviously offered her proper, proper pay. They've been respectful. They've been respectful. The way, that's the way she describes it. They've offered it. her a shit ton of money. They've offered her a shit ton of money. That's a respectful yeah. amount. Of <laughs> well, she says, It's always been a blast and an honour to play Sydney in the Scream movies. My appreciation for the films and for what they have meant to me has never waned. I'm very happy and proud to have been asked in the most respectful way to bring Sydney back to the screen. And I couldn't be more thrilled. I don't stop she dies, isn't it? <laughs> well, one of the other good things, and hopefully this is the thing that makes you excited about it, the person who's coming to replace the director is the person who wrote the first screen. Okay. They're, they've been friends forever. So. What's going to really excite me is they say, this is definitely the last one and we're not <laughs> doing any more. It's like the Halloween series. Oh, it's, I really like the Halloween, Halloween movies four, as well. Tw 429, Fast and Furious. Well, Fast and Furious can jog off. Fast and but... Furious 460. It's like the need for... It's just stop with the seat. Just stop. We get the format. We've watched it. Move on. And as Mike continues to whinge, let's move on to the next story. I'm ranting, not whinging. <sighs> anyway, for those of us who enjoy such things, uh, the movie Scream 7 is coming. I enjoy the movies. They should just stop. On to another whinging old bag... Miriam Margulies. <gasps> Never speak ill of Miriam Margulies. Yes, the lovable lesbian legend herself. She eats onions like apples. I know, I've seen... I think she's amazing. She is amazing. She's what is lovingly known as BSC. See, when she goes on batshit crazy about some yeah. random topic that you don't really care what their opinion is, people listen to her, unlike you. Um, she's a gobby old moo basically, is what I'm saying. Um, now, she was in the Harry Potter movies, and she yes. sometimes gets asked to do cameos, you know, that app where you can request uh, celebrities to mm. do a little message and hello, hello. Um, I mean, we'll get asked to do that soon, I'm sure. Do you mean you don't? I've been doing it for months. Cameo, if you're listening, I'm available. Um, yourself. <laughs> OK, fine. I don't know how these things work. Anyway, <laughs> she does cameos, mm -hmm. right? And because there's a lot of Harry Potter fans in the world, they ask her to do the... Which professor was this? I can't oh, remember. No. The one that deals with, like, pottery and gardening and stuff. Pottery and gardening. Pottery and gardening, yeah. I think that's it. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I paid attention to Harry Potter. But that's kind of her point. She's worried about them. She says, I worry about Harry Potter fans. They should be over that by now. You know, I mean, it was 25 years ago, and it's for children. I think it's for children, but they get stuck in it. And the main thing is because one of these cameos she was asked to do was for a wedding. Okay. Uh, to celebrate the happy couple, and, and she just... He's a little bit worried about what they might get up to on their wedding night. Right. All involves a wand. Mm. So I think it's magic. <laughs> Expelliarmus. Oh, not again. <laughs> Obviously, 
J.K. Rowling has her problems, and Miriam uh, has her problems. Her problems. Well, yeah. Well, she's quite pragmatic about it, exactly. Uh, uh, pragmatic about it, exactly. That didn't make any sense. Please, it didn't. Apologize. But, yeah. um, Miriam Margulies is quite pragmatic about it. She says uh, that she doesn't know her at, more, at, at all, but she admires her as a human being. She's a generous woman and a brilliant writer, but then says she has rather conservative views of transgender people that she can't make out. It's a matter of personal happiness for people, and I think that's what you should concentrate on. She said, if you seriously want to become a woman, you should be allowed to. You can't be a fascist about it. So all power to Miro Margulies. Yes. For Good being honor. Reasonable. Yeah. And J.K. Rowling fascinated by what people do in the toilets. None of your business, J.K. None of your business. But yes. Get in the get in the bin, J.K. Rowling, is what I say. Get in the bin. <laughs> but that's the showbiz news for today. Thanks for that, Mist. It's always nice to know that Mary Margulies is standing up for people and J.K. Rowling's is still. <laughs> You're welcome. But stick around next as it's Mike in the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mr. Mike. Now let's go deep into the somewhat poorly lit web as Mike has the buzz. Do you remember Erin Brockovich, the film? Yes. Do you remember the plot line of Erin Brockovich? A little bit. Do you remember the chemical that uh, they'd, they'd mixed into the groundwater and were killing the people off with? No. It was called hexavalent chromium. Lovely. Right. Does that have a common name? Hexavalent chromium. Okay. Quite common. Um, well, the reason why I'm referencing that epic movie with Julia Roberts... She's really quite tired after doing... Did she get an Oscar for that? I th think she should have, whether she did or not, it's a different matter. Okay. But yeah. Um, story about in Japan, in a place called uh, Fukuyama. Uh, what was that now? Fukuyama. What was that now? Fukuyama. Right? A cat has basically dunked itself into this pool of hexavalent chromium. What's it done to the cat? Right? Cats wandering around, poisoning people. So there's a toxic pussy roaming around Fukuyama. Right? Um, they told people, do not approach the cat, do not touch the cat. It is highly toxic, it's highly carcinogenic. Keep away from the cat. Is, is there any giveaway? Is it glowing bright yellow? Or? Um, it's acting suspiciously. How does a cat act suspiciously? It walks up and goes, hello, I'm a cat. I'm just a little bit suspicious. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's le they realised they, they worked it out because it was leaving paw prints everywhere from the hexavalent chromium. So it's staining the ground as it was walking away. Oh, but cats get everywhere. Yep. And that's why it's a bit of a concern. Oh, in case some neighbour starts feeding it and taking oh, it over. Yes, yeah. and, and taking it home and, and looking after it and then having to find out who the neighbour is. Yeah, after three months' worth yeah. of looking after uh -huh. it. Yeah. Yeah, buying toys and food and... Litter trays and all that sort of stuff. Basically, so you're saying this poor, unfortunate individual of, of caring and concern could 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 die? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's basically what they're saying to people: just watch out for any roaming cats, right? That are acting abnormally, because it it will not be a very well cat now. So what are the symptoms of this um, Fukuyama hexagonal go go go? go, go, go. Hexavalent chromium. Hex, hex, hexagonal chromium chloride. Cro he There's no fluoride in it. <laughs> it's not for your teeth. Um, Hexachromium chlorium. Is it not me saying it? <laughs> right. um, basically, it, it's a highly carcinogenic, right? And you've got like six months if you ingest it. Mm. Not good. What does all. it do to you? It riddles you with cancer mm. all the way through. Horrible, horrible thing, right? Um, so you don't want to go near it. But, of course, they're saying oh, kids will touch cat and it'll be that sort of thing. This is a light-hearted show. Why, yeah, why, why are we talking about ill pussies? Because it's a poisonous pussy. It's a poisonous pussy. Toxic pussy. This, this is not... Do uh, not lick the toxic pussy. This, 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 is not, this is not an information show for the news channel of Fukuyama. Um, 
in, in, in Japan. Moving on quite quickly. Um, how do you feel about AI? Um, I, I, I have friends who are very, very, very much against it and its effect on the artist. OK. I've seen some of the art that AI produces. With right? the 18 fingers. 18 yeah. fingers or them doing weird positions and mm -hmm. stuff. Right. And if you ever want a giggle, ask it to create a company logo because it just can't work it out. Um, right. So, yeah, it has got limitations, mm -hmm. but it's, it's evolving all the time right, and getting better. Right. To the point where a fully autonomous um, AI robot called Mohammed, right, um, has basically grabbed the ass of a news presenter. Oh, Lord. Right. So they're, uh, they're in Dubai. Oh, so it's an AI dummy? Yeah, it's, an, it's a robot. It's a full, fully autonomous robot with AI built in. Wow. Right. And as the, the news reporter is talking about this great innovation, the hand just comes forward and gives a little pat on the bottom. Is, is that right. because of the coding, or has it just decided because to do that itself? Of, because of the coding, it has done that. Now, what it's actually tried to do is move her away because it's got a proximity sensor, so it's asking her to step back a bit. Okay. Right? But instead of doing it in a good place, it grabbed her ass to do it, right? So she goes, oh, my... And you can see her face. She's not happy. She's like, you just goosed me, right? Are we sure it's not just a pervy man in a rubber suit? It's not you. You set that one up. It's your own fault. I don't wear rubber. <laughs> Leather, maybe, <laughs> but not, not rubber. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> but people are saying that, you know, it's coded to be a creep, and they're saying, well, it's not. It's just... It just learned how to be a creep. It's not even actually trying to be a creep. It's trying to move the reporter away to give it some space. But the, th the thing is, I, I do know with some of the AI stuff that, uh, that has been generated, it's of its own volition and, and scouring and, 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 and skimming the internet, etc., has ended up generating awful views and horrible statements. Yeah. And, so, and that's because it skims the internet where people are quite toxic and are quite horrible. So it's creating this nastiness, which is a reflection of society. And that's horrible. It's a reflection of Twitter. I, yes. I am dead naming Twitter. Yeah. And oh, yeah, no, no. Twitter is Twitter. Yeah. Um, well, Elon Musk says you're allowed to dead name people. So Twitter, 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 Twitter. <laughs> um, see how you like it, you billion. <laughs> oh, I'm being angry today. And very political. Very this political. is supposed to be a light hearted, <laughs> light hearted magazine show, show about yes. gay shit. Bums and willies and vaginas. Bums, willies, and vaginas. That's what the people want. Bums, willies, and vaginas. No, not, not creepy AI robots. Well, to be fair, the creepy AI also wants bums when he's in for chat. No. <sighs> um, what other devastation do you want to tell us about? Because it's been toxic pussies and robots groping people. What else have you got? And if you want to see what else I have in my bag of disillusions and despair, feel free to drop us a message at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us to our story of the week. Now, you like clothing. Yeah, well, it's clean, yes. Um, you, you own clothing? I, I do, all in, in a dirty wash bag. Do you own, and, and you've mentioned leather. I, I do own some leather, yes, but I can't wear that to work. Okay. Um, is that leather um, real leather or faux leather? It's, it's real leather. If I can eat meat, I can wear the rest of its skin. No, the, the reason why I ask is because you can get fake leather as well. Right? Yes, you can. But both fake leather and traditional cow leather are quite bad for the environment. Okay. Because of cows. Oh, the methane. Methane from their burps more than their bums. Oh. They burp more methane than they fart. Oh. It shocks people. Um, but yeah, really bad for the environment, cows. Yes. Right. They're gassy. Um, they're gassy animals, yeah. right? Because they've got three tummies. Yeah. And eat a lot of veg. I thought it was four tummies. Three. Oh, OK. Well, if they've got four, they've definitely got three. <laughs> um, so that's... Um, there's a lady who um, calls herself uh, Fish Kiyosab, right? That's the name. Okay, and what she does is she creates something called fish leather. Okay. okay. And what what she does is she gets she gets fish skin. Mm hmm. Okay. She freezes it. Mm hmm. She defrosts it. Mm hmm. She scrapes it. Mm -hmm. She soaks it, and then she tans it, and it becomes just as durable as normal leather. Okay. Okay. Um. So. Fish leather hasn't got the same um, impact on the environment because fish don't produce a lot of methane. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it's actually better to have fish leather than cow leather. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got a concern about what happens when it rains. Because you know, leather has that very leather smell. Yeah. And then it rains and it gets that yeah, very intense leather yeah, smell. Yeah. yeah. Um, you don't want to be going out in your new bondage gear smelling of kippers. More like kippers. Yeah. What kind of leather uh, bars have you been going to? I didn't say leather bars. Um, <laughs> very aromatic whiff of, of kipper. Um, people have basically, so like I said, this is a little bit concerning because there's a little bit of process behind it. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, but what she's saying is that it's the same amount of processing as cow leather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just you've got an extra step in it, which is freezing it, but the amount of time it takes to prepare the leather is quicker. Okay. So it's And isn't there like cuz fish are fish are notoriously smaller than cows. Yes. So to produce the same amount of leather. Well, you've got two sides of a fish as well. You have two sides of a cow. Yeah, but it's that so they're not as small as you think. She's not doing it with sardines. <laughs> <and anchovies>. <laughs> <laughs> the tiny little fishes. What are you creating? Don't know yet. I've got a skin four hundred thousand kippers, sardines because they pick the small fish. Yeah, big fishes like turbot and halibut and things. Big fish, right? And then she's skinning it so you get the both sides. So it's it's a bigger sheet. So big fish, not small fish in a cardboard box. No, in the freezer. Okay. Okay. She scrapes and she can make anything from like a handbag to a belt to a shirt. Yeah. Nothing about a sofa. Like mm, a leather sofa. Yeah. That 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 would. Take a whale. It's not a fish. No, but you get the principle. Okay. Um, but yeah, while we're, while we're whaling, because that's something that we should be break, um, that's all from the buzz this week. Thank you, Mike. And it's good to know that there are ways of being more resourceful in the world coming up. Stick around as we're going to have our game to play in Game of the Week. Welcome back, and yes, you're watching Chewing the Cud. We're going to play That's Mighty Interesting, and this one is for you, Mike. Something funny. That was witty. (laughs) (laughs) Ding, 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 ding. Game of the Week. So, in this week's Game of the Week, Mike's apparently got a few things that are going to be mighty interesting for us. I do. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, so, all that's going to happen, I'm just going to ask you a question and see if you can answer. Okay. okay. Um, what is the deepest ocean? The deepest ocean? Deepest ocean in the world. Emotionally or no, practically? Practically. Practically. Uh, the Pacific. Oh, no, I'm going to re- re- ask this question. Which is the deepest part of the ocean? The deepest part of the ocean. Deepest part. Of the, part the bit of at the bottom. The bit at the bottom. The bit at the bottom. That's the deepest part of the ocean. There's a specific part of the oceans which is the deepest bit. It's got a name. Uh, is it the Mariana Trench? It is the Mariana Trench. Ah! Although I thought that was a type of salad dressing. <laughs> So it's situated within the territories of the US, okay, mm-hmm. um, between the US and Guam. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's more than 1,580 miles deep. Oh, that is mighty interesting. Okay. Next question. This is a musical question. Oh, I do like a bit of music. Okay. Go on. Who composed the Moonlight Sonata? Moonlight Sinatra? No, not Sinatra. Moonlight oh, Sonata. Moon Wait, well, Sonata. Sonata. Not Sonata. We're not talking of a uh, when no judge bites or Sonata with the leaves. Okay. The uh, we're talking of a Sonata. Sonata. Um. Uh, uh, oh, I should know this really. It's been a long time since I played flute and orchestra. Um, You're a flautist. I used to be a flautist. I can bl- I can blow just as long as it's sideways. I can't blow a kazoo. Um, that that involves mucking about at the end. Um, mm, uh, Strauss. 
Strauss. What's well, Strauss's full name? Levi Strauss? Okay, it was Ludwig von Beethoven. Oh, um, sugar. <laughs> not even Strauss. Uh, composed in 1801. Um, but he'd never actually heard it himself because he was deaf. Oh! So he's never heard his own music. Oh, that's mighty interesting. It is. Um, okay, so now we're going to a geographical question. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't like geography at school. That's okay, you're not in school anymore. Um, in the entire world, which, I'm going very Moira Rosa, in the entire world, um, <laughs> which is the largest island? Which is the largest island? Uh, yes. The big one. The big one. The big one. That's the largest island. What's its name? Uh, oh, if, if, is New Zealand counted as an island? It is. Let's say New Zealand. It's smaller than Australia, though, which is the largest island. Australia counts as an island rather than a continent. Well, because well, it shares the continent with New Zealand. Oh, OK. Um, Australia itself is a country and an island, because it's one big island. Oh, it's like the UK, right? England, Scotland, Wales, mm -hmm. one island. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Mighty interesting. It's not mighty interesting. It's just quite. None of, none of this is mighty. You can't, <laughs> say, you can't say the Q word. BBC will have us. <laughs> that chemistry. How are you good with chemistry? Shocking. Shocking. Okay, shocking. we'll see how shocking. What is the chemical symbol for oxygen? Mm, two little ones and one big one. We're not on countdown. <laughs> it's not that show. But yeah, is it one big one and two little ones? Like H2O? That's hydrogen oxide. Oh, okay. It's not oxygen. Oh, is it just two balls then? Okay. O2. It is O2. Well done. Yeah. That was hard work. Um, it's so technically it's it's a singular one, but we find it everywhere in nature as two molecules. Ooh. Okay. Um, so it creates dioxygen or O2, as it's known, mm. which is what we recognise as, as oxygen. But the letter for oxygen itself in the chemical um, element table is O. Oh. Oh. That's mighty interesting. Good. History and architecture. You look like a historian wearing that shirt. I do look like a historian wearing well, this shirt. A, a supply history teacher. <laughs> Hi, kids. I'm cool. You're going to enjoy your day with me whilst your other teacher is suffering a mental health breakdown because you've driven him crazy. So I had the painters and decorators in. Okay. Who painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? Uh, it was Michelangelo's team. Okay. Headed up by? Michelangelo, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Michelangelo. Yeah. Um, Pope Julius II in 1508. Okay. Um, is replacing a blue ceiling with dotted stars. Is that what was there before? Just a blue ceiling, blue with, ceiling dotted with dotted stars? stars yeah. God, that, that sounds like a child's bedroom. So, the, um, in England, the original Houses of Parliament had the Star Chamber, which was the same thing. It was a dark blue ceiling with little white stars painted on it. Uh -huh. It was quite common um, in the Middle Ages to have that as a ceiling because it was supposed to remove the ceiling so it had contact with God. That's interesting. That's mighty interesting. OK, the next question you should get. I've, I've done quite well so far, to be honest. Yeah, you have done. Right, but this one, if you don't get, you're, you're going to be disappointed in yourself. Okay. Okay, because it's something you should know intimately. What's the longest bone a person can have in their body? <laughs> Depends on how lucky I've been on a Friday night. Yes, yes it is. What, what, what's the longest bone you think you can find in a human body? Uh, the femur. Ah, now, you see, if you said femur and I'd said right, that would be wrong. 14-inch penis. No, it's... 
<laughs> it is the femur. Yeah. See, I'm clever. Okay, here's an interesting fact about it, right? Um, femurs only break from serious accidents, such as a car accident, okay? Unless you've got osteoporosis, in which case they're quite brittle. Well, that's mighty interesting. Okay. Um, last question now. Okay. Okay. Um, in Greek mythology... Oh, now something I will know something about. Actually, no, I've changed the question. Ah! Um, what is the smallest bone in the human body? Uh, what I usually get on a Friday night. Silicone isn't considered bone. Your uh, li the little bone and your little toe. Oh, well, here's an interesting fact. Oh, actually, no, I tell a lie. No, it you've answered the question. No. I, no, I've got the answer. I think I know the answer. Well, you've already given me the. I think I know the real the answer. Time. Let me win. Let no, me win! Nobody on this show is ever classified as a winner. Anyway, the smallest bone in your body, I believe, is the hammer bone in your ear. Okay. So. You've, you've tried the smallest bone in your foot. Yeah. And then you've said it's the smallest bone in your ear. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you've said it's the hammer bone. I think it's the hammer bone, yeah. Okay. The staples bone, ah, located in the middle ear, so it's not the hammer bone. Well, I was close. You were close, but you didn't get it right. Um, <sighs> and basically, damage to this bone causes either partial or complete hearing loss, right? And it, or it can become derecognized by the brain. So your brain can just forget this bone exists and you go deaf. <sighs> well, that's mighty interesting. Right, I just saw at the end of the other question. Yeah, and that's all of the questions I have for you this week, because you cheated. Stick around as next is Mike, and that's science, that is. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we learn something we didn't need to know. It's Mike, and that's science, that is. science that is. Mist, how do you feel about pee? Um, raining down on me. Okay, nice. I'm actually talking about these things. Ooh, how little frozen about? peas. These aren't frozen, these are dried. Oh. Um, how do you feel about peas? Peas. I, I, I quite like peas with a bit of butter on the fork. Yeah. Good, lovely, wonderful. Because I, I'm aware that you have limited space at home. What I'm going to do is get your way of getting fresh peas, mm -hmm. right, in your abode, mm -hmm. okay, from non-seeded peas. Now, if you go to the supermarket or a, a, a horticultural establishment such as a garden centre, mm -hmm. DIY store, you can buy peas as seeds. Okay, okay? yes. You get, a, you get a very handful few, mm -hmm. right, at about two pounds, mm -hmm. okay? In front of you there, you have a box of dried peas. I, I, I do. Okay. And they are also about two pounds. Okay. For a lot of peas. It, now, it's a big box. It's a big box. Now, here's the thing. I wouldn't eat these peas. Because if you look carefully at the bottom of the box, it's got a best before date on there. May, in November 2021. Yep. So that's best before November 2021. However, mm. these peas will still grow. Will they? Mm. Oh. Because they're basically a dried pea is a seed. Oh, okay. okay. That is mighty interesting. It is. They're not doing that part of the show now. I know. That's, that's, that's science. actually that mighty is. interesting. Okay. Science, not interesting. <laughs> don't have crossover. This is not interesting. It's science. Okay. So, now what we want to do is we want to create a, a place where they can germinate or grow. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, I'm not using soil because getting compost is really bad for the environment. Um, and I didn't want little bugs in my house. Yeah? You know who so, I get my compost from? Well, a man called Pete. I'm supposed to get Pete free compost. Um, so what we're going to use is we're going to use a growing medium, or poo paper, as I will call it. Oh, that paper. is nice. Pa that's a fun pattern. It's a fun pattern, yeah. Um, so what we need to do is we need to create zones of, of moisture. 
Ooh, okay. So here we have a jar. Uh-huh. Okay, now this jar, in a previous life, held a candle. Oh. That should we say, in the, in the phrase of Moira Rose, would have been prestigious with me- memories of Americana. Oh. Not saying Yankee Candles, because that's advertising. So, <laughs> you just did. I'm not saying Yankee Candles, it's fine. Right. Oh, um, it still smells. That's that's my hand soap you can oh. smell. <laughs> it's a very nice hand soap. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> It's uh, lime and ki- lime and kiwi fruit, I think. And so, anyway, um, what you need to do is you need to take some of your toilet paper. Okay. Okay. And you quite, need, a, quite a chunky handful. Like, like a good amount. Okay. Good, a good wrap. Uh, and make and make a, a a bit for the bottom. Okay. A bit for the bottom. So and it's not going to go in that way. It's going to go in flat. Oh, okay. Okay. Because when you push it in, you need it to kind of make a little bit of a nest like that. Okay. Okay, and you want to do that three times. Three times? Three times, so you want a bit of a flat nest. Because what that will do... I can't get my hand in, it's it's too deep. Well, what you do is you pop it in and then push it down later with more. Okay. Okay. Because what what we're doing all the time is we're creating like a cup that holds a cup, that holds a cup. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie. Now, once you've done that... You should be three quarters of the way up your jar. Okay. Ooh. Well, that's my th- th- second one. Hold on, let me get a third one. Ooh. It's. It, it's. Okay. It's like no. trying to fist a tight twink. <laughs> Remember what that was like. Um, so, what we're doing here is we're creating layers of paper. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, that when we moisten it, it's not all just sitting in one area. Okay, because peas like a good growing medium. Mm-hmm. Okay, and they like to be moist. Mm-hmm. I like the word moist. Okay, now once we've got that, okay, we're gonna hold on to that for a second. Mm-hmm. Okay, because peas are a climbing plant. Yes. Yeah. So normally, what you see in gardens is you see lots of canes and string and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. What we're actually going to do is we're going to have self-supporting peas as a pea bush. Because what happens is a a pea is quite strong at the at the base. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the further up it goes, it gets the peas grow higher up, so they get heavy. Okay, mm-hmm. if you have them growing together, they'll tangle together. Mm-hmm. Okay, and create a self-supporting structure. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, but there's a way you've got to do it. You can't just go. You can't just fling them about with gay abandon. You've got to plan it. Oh. Okay. So this this is more complicated than I thought. I thought we were just flinging yeah. some peas. You, just gonna, you can just bung the peas in. Yeah. But what might happen is they might not cling together, and then they'll spread about, and they'll fall over, and your mm-hmm. peas will be droopy, and it'll just take a lot. Of, a lot Nobody of wants a droopy pea. No one wants a pea that's all over the place. No one wants a droopy pea. Right? You want a pea that's very contained in a very specialised area. Mm-hmm. So I want you to get a good run of roll. Good run. Ro- good good run of roll. Good run of roll. Okay. For for when you've got. A bad, a bad case of the runs. Yes. All right, there we go. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do is cut, fold a little piece over on, on, a, on a run. Fold a little piece over? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, not I've folded a bit too big a piece. Hold on. That's it. It's just like, like a half an inch kind of thing. Half an inch. Half an inch kind of thing. We, we know what you understand to be inches. You want to flap, yep. basically, with a crease. Okay. Open it up and put two peas into that crease. Okay. Okay, and then fold it over. Fold it over. Okay. And then next, to, when you fold it over, with those peas at the side, you're going to put another two peas in. Oh, I need more peas. Hold on. I'd suggest rolling out a lot of peas. Uh, uh, this, this is complicated. It is complicated. But they keep falling over the place. They, they do. Can I can give them a little lick and stick them down? If you want to moisten them a little, you can do. <sighs> It's about being careful and dexterous. <laughs> I'm clumsy and heavy-handed. How now, many what? more of these folds are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> How many sheets of paper have you got? Um, what, we're going to do that twice now. Do peas and roll over. Ooh. Then break off your sheet at the next at the next tear and just roll it up. Because now what we're going to do, uh huh, okay, is just roll them. I've just lost a pea, right? Just do some rolls with the with the paper okay. around to hold it together, and then you just keep rolling so you've got a good good amount of folds. It it yeah yeah. It looks like a pea in a rose. That's good. If it was a flower, it would be a peony. 
<laughs> right. Now what we're going to do with these peas, you're going to pop them into the little folds that you've got in the paper. I pop the peas in the folds that I've got. Exactly. I'm still... I'm still... Slightly tr drunk from last night. <sighs> there, um, was, there was an opportunity for a good song pun in there, but no. I didn't get it. What was it? Oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. We're not, we're not doing the quiz where you get name that tune. No, because that revolves around using a kazoo. <laughs> oh, no, you can't do that. So, right. as you can see, I've got quite a few peas shoved in here. Yes. Okay. How many peas do you need to stuff in? Just a good few. I, I, I think you're overdoing it with the peas. You need quite a few. Well, because no. they need to support themselves. No, well, the, uh, the so it should look like there's too many peas in there. Are we going to put these out and let them grow and then see whose is better? Because I've, I've, I've... We, we can... We're doing a follow-up show. Or is this going to be a very, very long segment? Very long segment. <laughs> um, what we can do is once, we, once we've done this and we've set it all up... Yep. Yeah. You can take yours home and we can bring them back one day. Because it takes a while for peas to grow. Yes. Okay. Okay, I want you to like, just give it a cool, bit more of a roll. A bit more, more roll. You want more... You want big cigar kind of shape thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, and fold over like like, like a chode. Like a chode, because then fold over the bottom so that you've got a fold, so it's not all spanky. Chode with a foldy bottom. Yep. Okay, and then that is going to sit... Almost describe my kind of gentleman. Okay. And then that's going to sit in the middle of your cups of, of paper. Yep. Like that. Got it. Okay. Do we need more stuffing around? We do support? need to then stuff around it with some support. So just balls of paper at that point. You know when this finishes up and mm -hmm. like you've got a lovely, beautiful, green growing pea bush? Yep. Uh, will it be quite beautiful? Would you say it would be appealing? No. Um, the pea flowers are quite pretty. They're quite little, small, white things. Um, but the bushes themselves, when they start to produce peas, are a little bit ugly. Okay. Ooh. And then to encourage germination, you're just going to put a single sheet over the top. Oh, does it need a little hat? Just a little hat. Little hat. Okay. Just a single sheet. Just a single sheet, and then moisten. A tucked in little. Yeah, don't, the water will help tuck it in. Okay. Okay, now you can go quite heavy with the water, because it's got lots of layers to soak through. And, and just so you don't spill it everywhere all over the electrics in the studio. Well, you've got the electrics underneath you, I haven't. Okay, okay. Um, and then they'll grow and you've got peas in your kitchen. And that's science, that is. That's science, that is. As they grow, you can chop them off and have them in salad and things. Mm. And they keep growing. Well, nom, 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 nom. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah. I'll wait for that then. Yeah. But that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV in all the usual places. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. You know how to push it. <laughs>